Hello, welcome back. This is an audiobook. Live the Life You Crave, Chapter 6, Inner Child. To reunite with your inner child is to uncover your natural gifts and talents. It's the entry level of your happiness and success. To do this, let's revisit the happiness and success myths we covered earlier in the book. 1. There's a special recipe or criteria to follow when attempting happiness and success. 2. The standard measure of success and happiness is money and material things. When you have both, you're a success. Number 3. When we struggle to achieve success by societal standards, we're a failure. While this is thought to be true, none of the three are. As unique and different as society is, so too are the means by which individuals achieve their best life. This is why it's referred to as your best life. The best thing ever is to live a life that makes us comfortable with ourselves, no longer mimicking those around us, but instead being our authentic self and embracing the same childlike enthusiasm that can make us capable of viewing life with honesty and enthusiasm. Connect with your inner child. Be brave like a child and be willing to explore all that piques your interest. Why would we all be created so different and unique if meant to do and serve the same function? That idea is as ridiculous as the statement itself. We as a thinking and feeling people are evolving consistently and when we learn better, we do better or we should. Let's acknowledge the societal pressure as a notion we reject and move on to simply being ourselves and following our truth. Practice the terrible twos mindset and just say no to anything that does not aid in your mission to create and enjoy the life you crave. Your formula for happiness and success is different from most others. What it takes to make one person happy will not so much as make another flinch. It varies greatly from person to person. It's when you face the fact that you're astray and open your mind to new possibilities that you find and resuscitate your inner child, your truth. This puts you in the driver's seat of your life. You can now pilot your journey in a way that satisfies your inner craving to explore and learn learn more about all that ignites your passion. You'll know your truth when you face your truth. Once you do, you can begin the restoration of yourself. Always keep in mind, you have the power to eliminate that which does not resonate with your soul making room for what does. No one person on the planet can tell you what you want. Only you will recognize your long lost friend, your true self, when you stumble across it. When you complete this process, you'll connect to your inner child in a way that's productive and fruitful. You're that child in charge of that child the caretaker of that child. You're the best hope for that child to have the brightest future possible. What are you going to do about it? The Ugly Truth Most of us have experienced moments in our lives that qualify as the ugly truth. There are those of us who unwittingly allow such moments in life to weigh us down and hold us back from the best life has to offer. It's for this reason I wrote this quote, Do not allow what has been done to you or for you defy what you can do for yourself. This is what I mean. Don't allow the ugly things that have happened to keep you from doing all you're capable of and meant to do. All too often, when wounded, it creates a shift in our self-belief and self-esteem. 
we tend to think about the person or persons who did this terrible thing or things to us, we instinctively want to them to admit it, apologize, and pay for their actions. Let me read that again. We instinctively want them to admit it, apologize, and pay for their actions. The ugly truth is this. Those who do bad things most often don't admit it, apologize, or pay the price in a way we feel is fair and right. They deny it and refuse to acknowledge it because if they do, they forfeit their agenda and freedom to engage in such behavior again in the future. The agenda of those who could do such terrible things may include a habit to revisit the memory of what they did and or the feeling they get from maintaining control over their victims who remain focused on them and their acts. If it, they admit their actions or apologize, they lose both. Plus, if they confess, they expose themselves and eliminate their freedom to continue doing such things. Another possible reason someone may cause others pain is because of their past damage or perhaps a personality disorder either undiagnosed or untreated. I'm in no way suggesting anything I've said excuses anyone who does wrong to another. I only hope to help you understand why they rarely admit their actions, apologize, or pay for it so you can be free from it. People like those who do terrible things do not think and feel the way you do. You deserve to heal from it and move on to your best life. Do not allow what's been done to you or for you to defy what you can do for yourself. The latter part of this quote focuses on what's been done for you, and it impacts many people greatly. This is what I mean. When growing up, many things are done for us. It's often hard for some of us to let go and take on the responsibilities of doing these things for ourselves. We may lean on the person or persons who do or did so much for us to continue helping out instead of doing it ourselves. The more independent you can be, the better your chances of being optimally successful and happy. It feels good when we accomplish such things on our own, plus it builds self-confidence. We gain a positive sense of our ability to provide for ourselves, which is empowering and promotes more self-development. When you decide to stop allowing what has been done to you and for you to get in the way of independent success, your independent success, you opt for greater opportunities. The ugly truth can set you free when facing the complexity of it and dealing with both sides of denial. Until making sense of your ugly truth, it can serve as a barrier that holds you back. To deny the reality of the ugly truth or pretend it never happened is to live a lie surrendering your freedom from it. But to dwell on it and live in the prison of your ugly truth is also living a lie and forfeiting your best life. Ugly and painful things, events, or incidents that happened are not who you are. If you deny the ugly things that occurred throughout your life, you become a part of the lie. To hide or ignore the ugly truth, you must adapt and be a character who's an accomplice to the cover-up of those awful things. When you face reality, the reality of your ugly truth, admit that it happened and exercise the remnants of it from your life, you live your truth. You don't have to share the ugly truth with others in your life. It's not your story or who you are. It's something that happened. You survived it, are free from it, and now control what happens in your life. You are the 
author of your life. You can edit the details, add or eliminate characters, and create the next chapters your way. You are in control. What another did to you is not who you are. Unfortunately, bad things happen to good people. You're here and reading this book or listening to this audio, so you survived. Positive energy is more powerful than negative. Stay in the positive. And when negativity surfaces, practice everything you learn from this book. It's all about walking through life with your gear packed and ready for anything. Your gear is the collection of positive tools you amass and use to help achieve the life you crave and keep you there.